Joining us now is former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb and infectious disease expert Dr. Robert Quigley, Senior Vice President and Regional Medical Director uh, of SOS, a medical and security assistance company. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Dr. Gottlieb, let me begin with tonight's news, which is that there is a, yet another case, an outbreak, uh, an individual who is confined to their home in Santa Clara County, California. It appears yet again that this is one of these anomalous cases not tied to any contact with a traveler from China, not tied to uh, visitors or having been to Japan or this. What does this tell you? I think it confirms what we've long believed, which is that there's low level community transmission here in the United States. Probably not thousands of cases in a city, because we'd probably see that in terms of a spike in ICU admissions, but maybe hundreds, and that can quickly grow. I think next week we're going to start turning over the card on more of these cases. By the end of next week, we should have the capacity to test 10,000 Americans a day. Once we have that capacity in place and doctors are ordering more tests, we're going to find more positives. But we have not been, you, you raise the question of tests, and I've, I've heard from, from you and others that this has been an area where we have not exactly excelled compared with other countries. We don't have the number of tests in a country of 330 million that we probably optimally should have. Well, look, there were challenges. This clearly was a challenge that CDC faced. I think the decision to put the travel restrictions in place early on was a key decision. It probably delayed entry of this virus. But then the um, challenges with the, the getting the tests in place, that was a very big mistake on the part of CDC and others, not getting those tests in place sooner. We're going to have that capacity right now. Um, going into next week, we'll have 10,000 by the end of the week, as I mentioned. Probably in the week after that, we'll have even more because we're going to be bringing on the high-complexity labs in the academic medical centers. So we're making up for the delay. I think we've used the time fairly effectively. The initial rollout of the CDC test was, uh, was problematic, was challenged. Dr. Quigley, from a practical standpoint, what should I do and not do uh, to uh, minimize my chance of being exposed? Should I not travel? Should I not go to the 76ers game? Should I not go on a public transportation uh, service? What? I, I think the best practice right now would be to practice universal precautions, which I'm sure you've heard about from uh, multiple uh, guests who've come on uh, this network and others. And it's simply uh, washing one's hands on a regular basis. It's avoiding uh, areas where people might be coughing and congregating in small groups. If one is sick, uh, if you're sick and you have respiratory symptoms, that you don't go out in public uh, areas and you have a low threshold for senior health care provider. And, and believe it or not, I think we should be practicing universal precautions at all times, not just in this setting of a recent uh, uh, COVID-19 outbreak. This should mm -hmm. be standard uh, operating procedures for all of us because our workplace is so mobile. Dr. Gottlieb has been very early and very concerned about these uh, community transmission uh, cases. How concerned should we be? How concerned are you that, that this is a new inning in this ballgame? I, I think that Dr. Gottlieb and I have a responsibility as health care providers to dispel some of the myths and to remain calm. I think there's nothing worse than letting the imagination run wild, and, and all of us uh, think that the apocalypse is around the corner. One of the comments that Dr. Gottlieb made, which was spot on, was he was demonstrating the surge capacity that we have within our health care infrastructure. Keep in mind, we have the most robust, sophisticated health care uh, infrastructure in this country. And I am fully confident that they will respond accordingly. I can tell you right now that there are, at a municipal level, at a state level, and at a federal level, rehearsals going on with all the appropriate stakeholders, that is the authorities, mm -hmm. to ensure that if indeed we go into the next step and we have more person-to-person uh, -person transmission in this country, that we are prepared. And that includes but isn't limited to making sure that our hospitals are able to accommodate those that get infected. And although Dr. Gottlieb didn't mention this, it's worth noting that 80% of people that get infected are completely asymptomatic. It's still not entirely clear to me, and it may not be to Dr. Gottlieb either, as to whether or not this disease can be transmitted from asymptomatic people one to another. There's reports to suggest that. But I think for the moment, we need to put things in right. perspective. 80% plus of people will not be symptomatic. One of the most important things um, people can do, and, and your guest mentioned it, is take simple precautions. Wash your hands, avoid sick contact, stay home when you're sick. Those kinds of behaviors practiced on a mass scale have an enormous public health impact. I think in, in some respects the market sell-off this week, um, as difficult as it was on many investors, did more to galvanize people's attention and focus them on this particular challenge than anything else has happened to date. And so people now are going to be more 
wary and more aware of the news and take some steps, and that could really mitigate the continued Which spread of this. Which is kind of my final question, Scott, and it is this. Five weeks ago, I think most Americans thought of this as a China problem. The markets largely overlooked it. And I would say back then, maybe we underestimated the severity of it. Have we gone the other way too far? Are we now overestimating the severity? Well, we, we haven't really done anything yet. I don't think the public has um, an unfounded fear of this at this mm -hmm. point. I think these things evolve very quickly. If you think about a month ago, January 20th was the date that China disclosed that there was human-to-human -human transmission for the first time. So we are a month away, a month out from when we had the first disclosure of a major event in China, that there was human-to-human -human transmission. If you've seen what happened in Italy and Iran, it grew very quickly, um, South Korea as well. So I think we might be at the beginning of a challenging month. We're going to see a rapid escalation in cases, and we're going to need to be prudent and take steps to try to avoid illness. We have the capacity to contain outbreaks in this country and avoid an epidemic.